Welcome, Cher Golding, Scott Davis, and David Leader to Parties Extra. We are at the Oklahomans Video Studio in downtown Oklahoma City. So you all, we're here to talk about Red Tie Night. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Well, your big event is next week. It is, March the 3rd mm -hmm. at the National Cowboy Western Heritage Museum also known as the Cowboy. Uh, <laughs> uh, we are so excited about this year. Uh, we've got a lot that's in store and planned. And uh, go ahead and expand on it if you want, Scott, or sure. share. It's gonna be a great time. We're really excited um, this year. Scott and David as chairs have really turned it up a notch and, and we're just so excited to see new decorations and new entertainment this year that we're bringing in through Dallas, which they've actually heard the band play, so I'm really excited. Um, but just a lot of new things that we're just constantly building on. When you have an event that's, this will be our 26th year, and it's one of those things that we're very honored uh, to be able to continue in uh, Mr. and Mrs. Cooper's footsteps and be able to hold this event every year. Um, but we're also saddened that this is still something that's a, a big cause that we still need to raise money for and help those that are affected by HIV HIV and AIDS in Oklahoma. You have a lot of people coming. We do. We do. We're at almost 600. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a few more tickets left. So this might be the last weekend. If you want to buy your tickets, this would be Come the last out. weekend to get your tickets. <laughs> it's selling fast. Okay. So what do people wear? Well, it's an event that I think everyone can get an opportunity to put on their best. You uh -huh. know, it's usually black tie or red tie for all the men. Mm -hmm. Women can put on their gowns and look the finest they can dress for Oklahoma City. It's an event that you want to dress up and look your best for that Oklahoma City event. Do they wear red? Absolutely. Women can wear their red dresses. They can mm -hmm. wear that black evening gown, however they want to look, but you're going to look beautiful for that evening. What are you going to wear, Cher? I'm actually wearing black this year, so I changed it up. I've worn gold, I've worn um, red a couple years, but this year I'm wearing black. But full-length gown, I'm very mm -hmm. excited. And you all? Uh, tuxedo. You all look <laughs> great everywhere you go. So what? what kind of great look are you going to put together? I'm wearing a classic black tux, so I'm going to wear a black tux with a little hint of red here and there. So, mm -hmm. David? And I'm wearing a navy, it's a suit, or mm -hmm. actually a tux, and um, that's pretty much it. It's kind of contemporary looking. Red tie? I, I will have a, a red uh, lapel pin and a little red a pocket square and some red socks. So I'm going to have a little <laughs> yeah. red here and there, yeah. splash of red. Well, I'm really uh, more concerned about my shoes that way because, <laughs> because I like to dance quite a bit and I want to be comfortable. <laughs> so my shoes are going to be very, very nice but comfortable to wear. <laughs> and how about the red for you, Cher? Actually, um, I've got um, a pin that I'll have and some jewelry that I'll have some red in it just to bring that pop of color. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm a little jealous of the guys that get to wear those really nice, you know, loafers and comfortable <laughs> shoes while the ladies were killing it in four inch heels. Mm -hmm. But I, that we will see the dance floor starting from about 9.30 on and until midnight. That will just be packed the entire and night with everybody dancing. Who, who, orchestra, it's an orchestra. Yeah, it's the Jordan Con Orchestra. Mm -hmm. And so during dinner, they're going to play a big band and orchestral music. And then um, at about 9.30, like I said, they will kick it up to more of a dance party band. Uh, atmosphere. You'll hear some Bruno Mars and just kind of some of the more contemporary stuff that everybody's used to dancing to. But that dance floor will be packed and it will stay packed um, for two and a half hours. And how about dinner? Is dinner going to be very fine? It's going to be wonderful. We're really <laughs> excited. Um, the Petroleum Club is, um, you know, creating a special meal for us that night. I've actually got to try the dessert, and that's the thing that I'm looking the most forward <laughs> to. Um, but we, it's got all the elements. We've got a nice surf and turf, so um, Varej is cooking up a very nice um, filet. And then um, we're actually doing kind of a play on Southern Comfort Food as well and doing uh, shrimp and grits. Yeah, Petroleum Club. They really do a great job mm -hmm, sure for that do. size. Mm -hmm. uh, for that many people, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Okay, so uh, how many years have you been at this? So for me, this is my third red tie. Mm -hmm. So I've been here, you know, two and a half years. And, um, you know, I've been doing events and nonprofits for the last 20 years. And when the opportunity came to do the largest event in town with a cause that is very special to me, I just jumped on the opportunity to come and work for this amazing organization. And just, um, I absolutely love what I do. And to be able to provide and give back to those in the community that need help and do some preventative services as well. Um, but then get to have this amazing event. It's a it's a win win for me. And how many years has the event been going on? Twenty six. This will be our twenty sixth year. Twenty six years. Yeah. That's oh amazing. Gosh, you all. That is unbelievable. Okay, so tell me about the decorations. 
Well, I think everyone's going to be amazed when they walk in. We're going to immediately transport them to a different place. You're not feel like you're in Oklahoma City any longer. You're going to feel like you've been whisked away to a different city. So you're going wow. to immediately feel like, where am I? <laughs> so you're going to see a different room. We're not going to release too much information, but we're going to let you know when you move in that evening, you're no longer in Oklahoma City or the or the Cowboy. You're in a different city, and you're going to from from 6 p.m. to midnight. You're in a different city. So you're going to love every part Feels of very it. Fun. Yeah, and I also like the fact that um, it's everybody's going to be a VIP, VIP that night. Uh -huh. It's not just you know a certain group. So uh, everyone has access to this very luxurious location that's uh, meant for everyone to go in enjoy cocktails and uh, maybe take a look at the Thunder game playing on the side because they are playing. There's quite oh, a bit of are. sports going on that, yeah. Yeah, that night. Yeah, so David was mentioned we do have a lounge set up mm -hmm. that we have the sports memorabilia set up as well and you can sit back there and you can have a special bar set up that you can watch the game. How and, nice and that is. So we're going to make sure that very smart everyone that. is taking care of mm -hmm. that event. Every person is treated like that VIP. There's not a, set, a certain area that's just set aside for VIPs at Red Tie, everyone's a VIP. Yeah, we've got to get those husbands yeah. that come back. That's <laughs> great. That's great, you all. Okay, so uh, you have auctions and raffles and things like that. So um, someone, I guess Sherry, you told me it was silent, 67 items. Yeah, I believe we're at about 67 items for live silence that's and chance That's a lot drives. of it is, um, and that's been the tradition of Red Tie Night, is to really have, um, I think we were one of the first dinner dancing auctions in Oklahoma City, and so to be able to carry that tradition on, and uh, we are just so impressed with the work that Scott and David have done, and the committee, because how do you reinvent that after 26 years, and to bring in just completely new items that you're not gonna see at any other event in town, and to be able to bid on these you know, amazing packages and trips and opportunities, um, and take up some really cool memorabilia, we're really, excited to, to be able to just continue that legacy um, and hopefully provide something that everybody likes. And tell us what um, in the, the live auction, a couple of those, what's in the you live want to auction? Any of those? Or the, oh, the bourbon trip? Yeah, mm -hmm. that'd be yeah. great. Yeah, good. So we have a bourbon trip that's planned uh, for people of six. I, I'd say mm -hmm. gentlemen, but also women love bourbon too yeah. as well. <laughs> and it's uh, going to be flights included, stay at the 21C Hotel. Um, we've expanded the bourbon tour uh, to be a three-day tour. Um, wow. Used to, they would lump it all together, not this organization, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a lot of tours on one day, and you know, it's uh, very difficult to get up the next day to try to tour something mm -hmm. else. So we wanted the people to truly enjoy uh, tasting those bourbons. That's awesome. So is that a raffle or is that the live auction? It's gonna be a live, live. auction uh -huh. item, and then to, to get people ready for that bourbon trip, they're going to dine at a Pearls, a, a right. crab, I mean, a Pearls Trap. Trappers. Yeah. And, and that, that's the bourbon capital of the world. It is. <laughs> <Really>? wow. <laughs> yeah. so they're going to try that bourbon bar there at Trappers. It's fabulous. And it, it, absolutely. It they're going to try all their bourbons there in their house mm -hmm. and wine and dine there, try them locally, and then go to Kentucky and then try them there. So. Well, it's their little pre party before they go. <laughs> okay, so how about raffle items? Um, we've got Elton John um, in Dallas on December 15th, that's a Saturday, and you get to stay at the Hotel Zaza, and so we're really excited. We know that those are hard tickets to come by, and so to be able to win those on a raffle is going to be really wonderful. Um, we've got some progressive dinners as well, so that uh, you and your friends can go around downtown and just go meet, eat at some of just the incredible restaurants that we have here. So we've got a lot. There's something really for everybody. There's jewelry. There's a mix of memorabilia. We have an autographed guitar from Prince. Um, there's just a whole lot of different things. Um, we have a partnership with the Humane Society, Central Oklahoma Humane Society, and so they're auctioning off a puppy this year, which, um, <laughs> you fun. know, we're, I mean, we're, they're so adorable. Um, and the nice thing is you don't have to take it home that night. It's gonna go back to its foster home. And uh, so that's always um, a nice thing to be able to bring this, this cute little puppy out and see if it can find a new home and to do those partnerships with other charities we're really excited to do. So for your live auction, you have a, a very fast auctioneer. We do. He's been clocked as one of the top um, auctioneers in the country uh, selling cars. And so we're really excited to bring Barry back. And I think this is his 20th year to be with us as well. And so he definitely knows our audience. And um, 
it's you know we have you know where you have your bid number and you raise your number mm -hmm. up but he usually just calls everybody out by name <laughs> and that's everybody, pretty good. which is fun uh -huh. and so he really does get to know um, our audience members and um, we're just so excited that he can kind of bring that explain the trips better our MCs as well and you all have some special MCs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah uh, Marky Mark mm -hmm. Mark yes and, uh, and Scott, Scott Hines, Hines. Mm -hmm. yeah so they're, they'll be on the stage too. Absolutely, they're gonna help pump up the crowd and so we're really excited um, to have everybody's involvement and this is just something that is a statewide organization and so we've got folks in from Tulsa, people in from Lawton and across the state that come and support our cause um, and it's just a really fun special evening. And new this year you all have an award coming up and it's honors my favorite person, Jim Valian. So tell us about that. David, you want to help that a little bit? Sure. Um, Scott and I, we've been involved since 1998. We would come and go uh, occasionally to the event. In fact, our very first time at Red Tie was in the back of the room at um, <laughs> off of Northwest Expressway. I can't remember the, the name Marriott. of that. The Marriott. Marriott, yes. <laughs> yeah. And our table's somewhat still in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but I, we remember seeing Mr. Valiant at the uh -huh. time and the movement in the room. And uh, just coming back to this organization again, it was nice to uh, get ourselves acquainted with this gentleman that's done so much for this organization that none of us could even even compare to what he's done for all of us and all the people's lives that he's touched. So we feel very blessed that we get to uh, give him a very nice award and uh, we've been working on that subtly and I'm just excited for that evening for him. So will you have this award every year or just sometime? It's so going to take a very special person to fill Mr. Valiant's shoes. Is, so it'll be called the It Jim? will be called. Okay. It's, um, this is our inaugural year, and so it's going to be the Jim Valiant Philanthropy Award. And so somebody that's gone above and beyond um, like he has. And, and we have quite a few that have been with our organization for over 26 years as well. And so um, for him, uh, he and, and Jackie and Barbara were our founders of our of the nonprofit organization, the Oklahoma AIDS Care Fund, and they got together and started and planned this party, I believe in Mr. and Mrs. Cooper's living room. So um, to be able to be that involved for so many years and how he's given back personally, professionally, it's just something that we felt it was time that we really needed to honor him and say thank you um, back. And there's several other donors throughout the years that I think we'll be able to say thank you back to as well. And how neat. Yeah, that is really neat, you all. And I know he'll be thrilled. Um, and does he know? He, I've already asked you that he that. knows that he's getting uh -huh. um, an award, um, but we we've got you know um, we've got local artists here in town that are creating a special award to look more um, fitting in his home as an art piece. <laughs> um, it's hard when you give such a, an amazing collector something, so we're very excited to continue and have an Oklahoma artist um, be involved in this and create this new award that we can continue to give on for many many years, which we're really excited about. So this will be on, uh, part of the program. Absolutely, it'll it be right before dinner, and mm -hmm. um, we'll be um, recognizing him and all of his um, work and that he's done. And I had no idea in reading his bio. I mean, I've, I've worked with him before at different events and knew um, how hands-on he is, but to know that he really started so many of the events in this town, from the Renaissance Ball at the Art Museum, the Beaux Arts Ball, Heart Balls. He's been involved in the ballet on and off for several years. Uh, so many uh, inaugural dinners, President Boren's inaugural dinner. And he um, always goes. The Keatings, too. Besides absolutely. doing the decorations, he'll all. He, he's he's just, there, hands mm -hmm. on, and uh -huh. attending and uh, buying auction items. Um, he was that guy that you know would go in and kind of upsell and help <laughs> bid up some <laughs> things, you know, and just or he'd buy always them. just really absolutely. <laughs> He would, all, yeah. he would buy them. I mean, it just supported the cause <laughs> mm -hmm. inside and out. Mm -hmm. That's that's really kind of wonderful. Yeah. So, anybody else on the program that night? That is predominantly it. You know, we always have a lot of celebrity um, athletes that come every mm -hmm. year, and so we're working with the guys at the WWLS Sports Animal Radio Station, and that they're going to recognize all of our athletes in the room, and so that you can see who's there. Um, I know but that's kind of awesome. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. really excited. And you have good lighting. We do. Uh, along we do. For that. Corey's uh -huh. um, audiovisual is putting mm -hmm. together an incredible lighting for us to be able to really shine some spotlights on folks and give everybody the recognition, um, and our donors throughout the night. You know, we're just so excited to have the support of our donors. It means a lot to us and that, you know, we can recognize them individually in the room um, is really helpful. And Cher, this benefits the Oklahoma AIDS Care Fund. So tell us a little bit about that and what you do. 
So there are currently 6,000 individuals across the state of Oklahoma living with HIV and AIDS. We're seeing about one new diagnosis a day, um, and about, it seems like almost every 12 days, somebody is actually passing away from AIDS complications still, still. in our state. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. It's still um, in the south um, where we're located. Um, we're still part of what's considered an epidemic. Um, I think the, the coasts uh, are progressively doing a lot more. They're getting more funding and be able to move that needle a lot faster than we can here in the southern states. And so we just really, this is a time for us to get our awareness out about this disease. Um, prevention is a big part of it. So most of the dollars raised, well, 100% of the net proceeds stay here in Oklahoma home and get granted back out through our community grants program. But our goal is to reduce new HIV infections, to expand free testing opportunities, because if you don't get tested, you don't know your status, then you don't know if you're transmitting um, the disease to someone else, and mm -hmm. just making sure that you're protecting yourself and those that you love. Um, and then just making sure that anyone living or affected by the disease has proper treatment, access to care, and any other emergency service needs like food, clothing, shelter, those things to make sure that their quality of life um, just continues on in, in a positive way. So one a day is a lot. It's a Absolutely. lot. Mm -hmm. It's it's very high, um, and when you consider, like a city like San Francisco, um, only has 69 new infections each year, and we have over 300. Mm -hmm. There's something you know that's still not quite getting happening here. Um, I know that our education health mandate uh, right now is still. Um, the ones that the teachers have to use in the classrooms is from 1987 and it hasn't been updated and, and there's a lot of technology uh, advancements in treatment and care that have happened. Um, we know a lot more about the disease than we did in 1987 so we're actually working um, with several groups at the Capitol through the Elton John AIDS Foundation to try and hopefully get the language in that mandate updated uh, so that we can at least um, in a life science class talk about the disease and talk about just from a medical standpoint on you know how it's contracted how you can prevent it and just things that you need to be aware of and I think the more we talk about it the more we can shine a light on it and lower those new transmission rates prevent treatment and care yes absolutely. okay so you also have um, some other event coming up what what is it we do and so along with the advocacy mm -hmm. on March 20th we have our advocacy day and we will be having that at the Sports um, Hall of Fame over on Lincoln Boulevard in the morning it's a breakfast and um, it's free for anyone who wants to attend you just have to RSVP but we're bringing in a young woman named Paige Rawls she was born with HIV and it was in her teen years that she let her friends know that she was HIV positive so these are friends that were having sleepovers at her house and were her best friends and then when she came out and told them that she was living with HIV they really got scared and they bullied her and kind of just turned on her immediately and she had to actually switch schools because she was bullied so severely and now she's an advocate and goes across the country and is she's going to help really advocate for why we need to update this health mandate in that there's several ways you know that you can contract this disease and that you know hers was through her birth mother and um, you know through no fault of her own and just really wants to reduce that stigma and that she's a great kid a great person she's in college now and just um, very healthy and, and you know living a great life but just wants to bring that awareness to and life. And you have this every year I Thank we you. do. We mm -hmm. have an advocacy day every year and through With our sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Very so we're and really the speakers are really it's incredible. dynamic. Mm -hmm. We brought Jeannie White, uh, Gender, I Ryan White's that. mother mm -hmm. last year. Um, so just really trying to show different ways and different ways families are affected by this disease, whether it was through hemophilia at the time with Ryan White or, you know, through Paige passing, getting this passed on through her through her birth mother, you know, just different things. It affects everybody and just the more that we're aware, I think we can just be kinder and nicer to one another. Mm -hmm. That's true. So back to the party. Volunteers, do you have a lot of volunteers? Do you have board members? What do you all have going on? We've got an incredible group, but I think our committee has just knocked it out of the park this year. We have been lucky. We've we brought in f few of the old and a lot of the new. So we've been this year, we've been able to recruit so many great, outstanding uh, committee members, and they have been so energetic and excited about it because of the mission and the cause that they have just all jumped in and, as we've talked <laughs> about, brought these great auction items as well as all this wonderful energy and brought all these wonderful people to come to this event. So we've had a great committee this year, and they've worked so hard to make this the best road tie Isn't ever. Isn't that the best? It yeah. is. We're so excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That's great. Okay, and you have a board too, I think. Don't you? We do. We have um, about 16 board members, and um, they're all coming. They, we have 100% board participation have every year for this event, and that's one of the things that I love to be able to say about our organization is that our board members give back. They're donating auction items. They're you know recruiting their friends and putting together tables. So they're very involved um, and very hands-on, and we're so appreciative of the work that they do. That's awesome. So. These very few tickets available, where can yeah, I get them? We are. You have a um, website? So we can get them, yes. Um, it's redtienight.com, mm -hmm. um, and so they can just log on and, and purchase tickets there, and um, when they're sold out, they're sold out. So you definitely want to want to get those this weekend, because I'm, I'm afraid come Monday or Tuesday morning, it's going to be slim pickings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else about the party? I'm just looking forward to this. I mean, it's a whole year of culmination coming up, and it, it's, it's very exciting. Okay, anything else about the... Well, we're eight days away, so I think we're at that point where we're nervous, but we're excited. Uh, and yeah. Just can't wait for everybody to come and have just a wonderful time. I mean, that's something that, you know, reflects on all of us and in what we're trying to give back to um, just not only shed a light on the cause, but, you know, really in, it, for what everybody's spending on their sponsorship dollars and that to really um, give them a, a wonderful party in return. Yeah, we're ready for the big celebration. I know they're going to enjoy themselves that night. We're really excited. Great. Well, thanks, Cher and David and Scott, for continuing the Red Tide Night tradition. The AIDS cause is lucky to have you all fighting for it. Have a wonderful and a beautiful evening, and thank you all for taking your time to tell us about this special event. Thanks, you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.